Tears are falling, hearts are breaking. How we need to hear from God. You've been promised, we've been waiting. Welcome, Holy Child. Welcome, Holy Child. that you don't mind our manger, how I wish we would have known, but long awaited, holy stranger, make yourself at home, please make yourself at home. We're not breaking heaven's silence. Welcome to our world. Welcome to our world. Fragile fingers set to heal us. Tender brow prepared for joy. Tiny heart whose love will save unto us is born, unto us is born. So wrap your injured flesh around you, breathe our air and Rub our sin and make us whole. Perfect Son of God, welcome to our world. At this time, Daryl Judy are coming to light the Advent wreaths for us. Let us read the litany responsibly. We are a people of joy. We come to light the candles of hope, peace, and joy. Come into our midst, O Holy One. Help us honor you and work in our lives. Let us make space in our lives where joy might be born. May we reflect God's joy as it finds a home in our hearts. We watch, we wait, we rejoice. We pray. Come, Lord Jesus, come. children to just stay where you are, but you can watch uh, the message from Miss Pam, the children's message. Hi, boys and girls. Tonight is the third week of Advent, the third week of waiting for the birth of Jesus. So we've been through the week of hope and the week of peace. And tonight we light the pink candle and it's the week of joy. So I've had a joyous day today because I've been decorating my house for Christmas 
and that always makes me feel good and happy. I hope it makes you feel that way when maybe you decorate your Christmas tree or your room. And I came across this box. I had titled Angels on it. And I want to show you some of the angels. This one's made out of sort of some paper. And my mother made that. So I'm going to put that angel right up here. And then I look down and there's another angel. My mother made this one too. It's made out of some little netting. I'm gonna put that up next. There's another angel. My mother liked making things. And she was very good at it. And the next angel I'll show you is my mother made again. This was the hardest one. And this is the special angel that in my family, we always put on top of the Christmas tree. So I always feel good with that angel up there. I feel joyous because it makes me feel like the angels like blessing our house, bringing good joy into our house. So, you know, last week we talked about the shepherds and the shepherds, we kind of left the story that the shepherds were lying on the ground, going to sleep or sitting around the fire. And this week, the reason I'm talking about angels is because angels had such an important part of the Christmas story. You know, angels are really special. They're chosen by God to be messengers. So angels always bring a message. So the angel in this story, first there was a young woman named Mary, and an angel appeared to Mary, and the angel said, Mary, good news. You've been chosen by God to be the mother of God's son. Wow. What a message that must have been for Mary. Wow. And then an angel went to Joseph. And the angel said, Joseph, Joseph, I have a message for you. You are going to be the earthly father of God's son. And again, wow. I wonder how Joseph and Mary felt about these special messages from angels. And Joseph and Mary later they rode on a donkey. They went to the town named Bethlehem where they were, were born. And we're going to leave that story there right now. And we're going to go back to the shepherds. And the shepherds, probably why Joseph and Mary were on their trip, the shepherds were laying on the ground. It was late at night. They were watching up in the stars. And guess what? An angel came. And then the whole sky was lit up with angels. And the angel said, good news of great joy for tonight in the city of Bethlehem. A baby has been born. The baby is the son of God. Again, whoa, what an amazing message. And the shepherds were looking up the sky full of angels who were singing and, and saying, great news, good news, great joy. And the shepherds decided, we're going to go find this baby. So they left to find the baby. So we'll hear some more of the story next week. But you can imagine how joyous they all felt. How Mary and Joseph had this wonderful baby, the child of God. How joyous that was for them. How the angels were so joyous because they probably felt so special being able to deliver the message to the world that God's son was born. How the shepherds felt joyous, so joyous they got energy and they said, Let's go find the baby. So at Christmas time can be a time of joy. Not every minute and every day, but sometimes it can be a time of joy. And I wish for you this week times of joy, times when your heart is filled with good thoughts and good love, and you feel really good and joyous inside. So that's our message for tonight, that the joyous message the angels brought and you know what? You can be a messenger for God, too. You can say, good news. Jesus was born on Christmas Day. So I'll see you next week with another part of the story. Bye-bye. Loving God, we pray, O oh God, that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're grateful that you no longer desire sacrifices. Grateful that 
your appetite for unblemished calves and sheep is no more. We are grateful, O oh God, grateful that the need for sacrifice has been removed by a plain-spoken fisherman who spoke to a Samaritan woman of things deeper than the well she visited. Grateful for that carpenter who chose to befriend a mad woman touched by the streets and chose her to be the first one he would greet following his resurrection. We pray, O oh God, for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray that it be just like heaven, where angels prepare a feast for beggars and issue invitations to prostitutes and lepers. A place where angels welcome the lame, the blind, and those paralyzed by fear. And where everyone sings songs of joy. We pray that your will might be done on earth as it is in heaven. Where all are safe and welcome. Where all sit at one table. Where all serve each other. Where all are well fed and warmly clothed and welcomed because they are part of the family. We lift our prayer, O oh God, in the name of the one who is the host at every meal. Our Father, Father who art Lord, in heaven, Lord, Lord, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. scripture this evening is from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter. I'll be reading verses 39 through 45. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a city of Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the babe leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed to Mary with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the voice of your greeting came to my ears, the babe in my womb leapt for joy. And bless the reading of God's word. This is the third week of Advent. It's the, the week that we light the pink candle, the candle of joy. Seems fitting to do so. We're told um, frequently that Christmas is the happiest time of the year. Or as they say, Christmas is the ha ha happiest time of the year. And it is. Unless it isn't. It's a time that many people find extremely stressful. It's expensive, it's hectic, it's rushed, it's demanding. The happiest time of the year. Unless it isn't. If you've got a 
an empty chair at the Christmas table. If you have a child who's just been diagnosed with an illness, then Christmas isn't the happiest time of the year. And no amount of twinkly lights will brighten that gloom. And yet the Christmas story is filled with joy. You've got this old woman, Elizabeth, who is way past the childbearing years, and she's pregnant. And the Bible says she's filled with joy. She has to also be scared to death, but she's filled with joy. And then you've got this young woman who is really too young to be having children, and circumstances are not right for her, and yet the scripture says she's filled with joy, and she goes to visit old Elizabeth, and so you've got pregnant old Elizabeth in the house, and you've got young pregnant Mary coming to visit, and when young pregnant Mary walks into the house, old Elizabeth says that the baby leaps in her womb for joy. The Bible's full of stories of joy for Christmas. Some of you know what I have been slow to grasp, and that's that there is a world of difference between happy and joy. It's a world of difference. Happy and joy live on completely separate planets in an unparalleled universe. Happy is physical. Joy is spiritual. Happy is a young child's giggle where joy is an old person's smile. Happy has, has height. Joy has depth. And happy can't touch joy. In the scriptures, it never says anything about It doesn't say that Elizabeth was happy. It doesn't say that when the angel came to Mary, that Mary said, you know, happy am I, you know. And the angel didn't say, I got some happy news for you. And the angel, when they appeared to the, to the, to the shepherd, no angel ever said, you know, happy holidays. <laughs> the reason... The Bible talks about joy instead of happy. Is that happy is happy is is, is so physical, so um, so circumstantial, and joy is spiritual and, and emotional. It has has depth. It has promise. You know, people will send out pictures uh, near Christmas of, of their houses all decorated for Christmas, and I like that, you know, because that's, that's, that I like happy. Happy's cool. My houses look nice. What I really, what really irritates me is, I know it's just a personal thing on my part, but what really irritates me is when I see a picture of somebody's um, Christmas tree, and it's got tons and tons of, of packages wrapped underneath and the packages stretch out from under the tree and they go across the family room and into the dining room and maybe even into the bathroom. <coughs> All these presents. And it's like, think about it like this. The stable's a small place, right? The stable's small. I mean, a lot of us couldn't enter the stable without bending down some to go in the stable. This is a little place. You can't get in that stable with all those gifts. You gotta leave them out there. You gotta leave some other stuff outside too. You can't get in that stable if you leave, if you've got hold emotionally of all this bitterness and, and anger and hatred and prejudice and stuff like that. You gotta let go of that because there's no room for that in the stable. And, and it, it, it strikes me. You know, there's a lot of people that really don't like the phrase happy holidays. And they get upset. They think that's anti-Christian or whatever. Yeah, it's, I want everybody to have a happy holiday. But I want them to have a joyful time too. Because you know what? Happy. 
Happy is all about the holiday. Joy is about the holy. Christmas was never supposed to be a holiday. It's all right that it's a holiday, but that wasn't its intention. Christmas' intention was to be a holy day, to be a time of spiritualness, a time of joy. And, and take all the stuff about Christmas and, and sit it aside for a little bit and, and think about, you know, the word Emmanuel, that the child was born and we would call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. The joy is even more than God with us. The joy is that God wanted to be with us. God wanted to spend time with us in our lives. God wanted to be a part of our lives. I mean, that's, that's powerful. That's, that brings joy. A friend of ours, um, young couple, and I remember we were visiting their house, and they showed me pictures. I, I've always loved Jimmy Carter. I've just always loved him. I think he's a, a great example of what a Christian ought to be. She showed us pictures of they had been invited to Plains, Georgia, to spend time with Jimmy Carter. And they actually had like a, a street dance in Plains, Georgia. And, and she showed pictures of her and Jimmy Carter square dancing. And a part of me was like, oh, I'm jealous of that. I couldn't imagine that Jimmy Carter, I can't, well, he didn't. I can't imagine that Jimmy Carter would want to be a part of my life, you know? <laughs> but Jimmy Carter can touch God. I mean, God wanted to be a part of our lives. It's like I bring you news, good news of a great joy, which shall be for you, Jane, and, and it shall be for you, Dustin, you know. God wanted to be part of our lives. And that's joy. And happy can't touch joy. So I wish everybody a happy holidays. But far more than that, have a joyful, holy time. Let us pray. Lord God, you wanted to come into our lives 2,000 years ago. And some of us have let you into our lives and then forgotten you were there. And then we've invited you back into our lives and then we've ignored your presence. And so God, we ask you, come into our lives again. Be a part of our lives. Be a part of our lives tonight and tomorrow and every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, be a part of our lives forever. We know that's what you want. And that brings us joy. Hallelujah. Amen. Before we come to the communion table this evening, I want to read to you a statement by a, a medical doctor. I was, I was touched in reading this. Um, he's a pediatrician. And he's telling about one of those joyful moments of his life. And it, it spoke to me. I hope it speaks to you. He writes, One of my little patients taught me a profound lesson. We were looking at each other. He was sitting on the examination table. I was standing in front of him. He was sick. I was healthy. He was undernourished. I was well fed. He was under six. I was over 60. He lived on one side of the railroad tracks. I lived on the other. He belonged to the economically underprivileged. I belonged to the privileged. He was black. I was white. There could have been no greater chasm between us. Then with the God-given wisdom of a small boy. He bridged the chasm with one little movement and three simple words. Raising his hand, 
he patted my arm and said, I like you. That's joy. When we realize that we like other people, regardless of who they are, we like them.